So Jamaica shares relationships with many other countries across the world and grants privileges and immunities to incoming diplomats in accordance with diplomatic practice and our constitution. And this morning we discuss exactly what this legal framework looks like and what impact it could have on diplomatic postings and relations. We've got Alexander Shaw with us, an attorney at law, uh, to shed some light on diplomatic relations. Morning, sir. Welcome to Smile Jamaica. Morning. And Michael. I think morning. this we're having this discussion because what happened recently uh, that uh, apparently I say this, you could correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, Jamaica refused um, to give diplomatic immunity uh, to someone's spouse because it was same sex. Is that right? Well, that is what um, is circling okay. you know, um, in the public. Okay, just to be clear, so Jamaica is not saying they can't come to Jamaica. They're no. just saying if you come to Jamaica, we can't give you diplomatic immunity. That is so. And that is by our law, yes, constitution. Our constitution does not recognize same sex marriage. Okay. Uh, by, uh, I think, section 18.2, it doesn't recognize. Um, any marriage outside of a man and a woman. Okay. So what is diplomatic immunity? Well, certain... So the starting point is that a state cannot enforce jurisdiction on another state, right? And so diplomats come to your country to really carry out acts or responsibilities of their state. And so whilst they are in your state, they should enjoy certain privileges because if you are to prosecute them, it means that you are claiming jurisdiction over them. And so they benefit from certain privileges that is, you know, free from criminal prosecution. So Stop pretty, right here yes. for a second. So if a diplomat who has diplomatic immunity comes to Jamaica, kills someone in Jamaica, we can't arrest them? Well, you really can't arrest them. Um, you should really allow their state to deal with it. That is, quote-unquote, what it means. But the argument, though, is that a diplomat, or the principle um, emanating from the Vienna Convention is that a diplomat should respect the laws of, and yeah. cultural differences of the receiving state. And in this case, Jamaica would be the receiving state. Right. So insofar as Jamaica would grant certain privileges, the anticipation, the expectation is that you would not violate the cultural norms. You would try to adhere much as possible mm -hmm. to the values of that society. Because as you know, there will be cultural differences and there are like 70 other countries that don't recognize um, same-sex marriage. So it's really, you know, a watershed moment. Yeah. for us here in Jamaica. It is because I know right now, I mean, what, as you say, what is circulating is the issue of the same-sex marriage, but, but there are countries also that recognize polygamy. Yes. So, and Jamaica does not have laws, to my knowledge, do we, that allow polygamy? No, because right. the only marriage we observe or we um, respect is the marriage of one man and a woman. Right. So, so, so to me, it's the gray area I'm trying to understand because if a diplomat comes from South Africa, for example, that does recognize polygamy and says, I'm coming with my three wives, yes. um, do we also say, well, we don't recognize marriage in that sense, so you got to pick a wife because we can't recognize the other And two. that is why the, the onus is on the sending state to select someone who will not go against or whose um, values, principles, you know, morals will not conflict with that of the receiving state because it is mutual respect and understanding. As I've said before, you will have countries. Well, countries have different cultural norms and practices and so you really can't enforce because when you do something like that, you're pretty much enforcing or trying to influence the other state to accept your way of life. Yeah. I know you didn't come here to speak of that incident specifically. Yes. I think you're telling us about laws and constitution, but I want to go back to that case mm. just for a second. So as far as you know, our government didn't do anything wrong. No, because in essence, if we were to accept what is being suggested, it means we're going against our law and our constitution, as far as I know it, is 
the supreme law. And as a sovereign state, we have the right to determine our values, our way of life. But if, if I'm going to give, or if the government would give a diplomatic immunity to um, a same-sex couple, yes. that doesn't necessarily mean, I'm asking, yes. that doesn't necessarily mean we agree with same-sex relationships. Do it. But what you are pretty much doing, you are acceding to a violation of your laws because it's not just the constitution we also have the offenses against the persons act that um you know criminalizes buggery so we have to also bear that in mind okay so on the one hand you don't want to violate your laws but you also want to respect the diplomatic relations that you would have um, had over the many years as I've said before, the Vienna Convention speaks yeah. clearly about, you know, this mutual respect and understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I see here, my producer said, the State Department social media mentioned a five-year accreditation policy for diplomats. Um, from what I'm getting from what you're saying, is, is it that, because I want to figure out, so when does it become standard across all countries that certain things must exist or is it that every country decides that well for my country if you're coming here you have a five-year accreditation process for my country this is what you have is, is this how it works at well, what point do, do all diplomatic meet people meet and say well yes we have differences but the common thing must be these things well I, I the onus is really and the parties okay. to find um, a common ground. And I think certainly in terms of U.S., I believe it was uh, in 2021. I, you know, I could be corrected there. But their, um, the tenure is for five years. And outside of that, it's discretionary. Mm -hmm. All right. So countries enter into agreement on a you know, day to day basis and it's based on that mutual understanding of what it is that you know we are bargaining about. Um, other countries may have different rules in terms of you know what it is that they will accept and won't accept and such is the case with Jamaica. Yeah. Um, by the way, it, it says here Ambassadors uh, Shazia Affairs and Deputy Chief of Mission are exempt from the five year accreditation policy. So yes. apparently those uh, depending on whether it's the country they're coming from or we could say, yeah, if you yes. want to stay four more years, yeah. you, you can. Um, so there are different classes of, you know, persons who benefit from different yeah. privileges. I, I think the only argument here with me would be, I'm, I, I'm not certain I agree that if we allow that, we are saying we agree with you guys, you know. I'm, I'm, that's, that's the only area I think to me is a little bit grey. Yes. Um, that I'm not certain that if the government says, all right, um, I come and whoever come with me. But it's not as if you can't come, but the, the you recognition. Just can't, you can't get the diplomatic there are community. certain privileges. Right. Recently, we saw where our justice minister was saying that he wasn't going to grant um, a marriage license to, to, to persons, um, to homosexuals. I, I think that was perhaps the story that um, what was carried. And so that is a privilege. Granting of a marriage license is a privilege, right? And if you are not to recognize same-sex marriage for a diplomat, it goes against the, the grain of your cultural values. And it's an issue that runs deep. And so our elected officials can't treat with it lightly simply because it violates, you know, core principles in Jamaica. And, you know, we're not there yet. It's a discussion that we have to have, you know, as a country. And so for them to just accede to that request, it is going to cause some amount of disquiet, which it has been causing because we, you know, there is disquiet diverge. with whom, though? With the public. Okay. And it is largely because of how our society is structured. You know, we are predominantly a Christian society, and so you will have different groups coming out, either in support or, you know, against the position. And so we as a country, and I don't think a country should, you know, force you 
to reach a position. Yeah. Um, we're going to go now, but by the way, are, are the kids of the, the parents or the kids of whoever gets diplomatic, diplomatic immunity, are the kids well, also the family, offered? Because I do the believe, entire family? Yes, because uh, the convention, I think it is somewhere in the 30s, um, speak about you know, certain privileges being granted to the family, the household mm -hmm. you know, um, okay. of, of diplomats. They may not get all the privileges, but certainly if you are part of my family, then one would ordinarily expect that you'd benefit from certain okay. you know, um, privileges. Yeah. Thanks for coming, sir. Blessings. Sit Thank with you us for, for a while. Me. Attorney at Law, Alexander Shaw. Still to come, should we raise the age of consent? Stay tuned.